Okay, so in this video, we are going to walk through how you can track all of your form submissions that have come through from Dynamics 365 Marketing Forms and how you can then review in Google Analytics to see how many submissions you've had for each one. Now, if you're not already familiar with Dynamics 365 Marketing, you might be like, ah, okay, well, can I not do that anyway? Depends on how you set things up. So if you think about, you could have a form, someone could submit it, and you can actually display a message in the middle of the same page. You could have one form and you could redirect it to multiple thank you pages. That's easy because you've got a different landing page when someone submits for each form. But you might wanna just use one thank you page and you might even just wanna use one form for a lot of things as well. So what this is going to show you is how, no matter how you're using your Dynamics 365 marketing forms, how you can look in Google Analytics and see how many forms were submitted um, and what type of form, that kind of thing. You can then use that to track goals, um, see how you're progressing, all of that good stuff that a marketeer should be doing. So this assumes you've got Google Tag Manager set up. It assumes you've got Google Analytics set up. I'm going to have links to both of those um, videos that I've done previously and also blog posts. I'll have that in the description. And then I'll also have a link to the blog post that goes along with this video because it'll have screenshots for every single one. And sometimes the blog's easier, sometimes the video is easier. All right, so the very first thing is in Google Tag Manager, I'm going to go down to Variables. And in yours, you're going to click on Configure in the Built-in Variables section. Now, there are variables that Google have already provided that when somebody fills out a form, it captures some information and passes it back through into Google Tag Manager that you could then push into Google Analytics. So if you've not already done it previously, you need to come into the form section and just select all of these different things. Just tick the boxes and you are done. So you're gonna do that first of all and add it. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to um, come over and we're gonna go into triggers and you will be creating a new one, but I'm gonna go into the one that I've created. So the first thing that you need to do is you'll come in here and you will be selecting a trigger type. So again, I already have it. So if I just go out of this and pretend I don't and start a new one, it will look like this. So you'll click here and then you'll click on form submission will be the trigger type. Okay, so if I just go back into the one that I've got. So there's my trigger type. And what you'll want to do to start with, because you want to just check this out, is you're going to go ahead and select all forms. Okay, so you want this to trigger on any form that's submitted. Now we'll come back to this later, um, but what you might find is there'll be some forms that actually they're not really a submission in the same type as a, here's my name, I want some information. So on my website, I have search boxes where someone's searching through my website. So that's why I'm basically saying it triggers on some forms, but only when the form class does not contain search form. So within the styling of the form, I know that if it's got that in it, I'm going to exclude it. So for you, start off and just put all forms until you get comfortable with it and then you can go and exclude if you need to. All right, so once we have that trigger condition of form submission, what we can do then is if you, if you've already got Google Tag Manager set up, you should be familiar with this, but I can go ahead and I can preview and I can say, okay, what's going to happen or what's going to be triggered when I look at a specific page. So make sure that when you put in the page that you want to connect to, that you put in a page that you've already got one of your Dynamics 365 marketing forms embedded onto. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click connect. So this is going to open up for me and we can see that there is my form, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to submit this form. Oh. 
I don't know why I care about typos. It's junk data. So what we'll see, ignore this form submitted one because we're going to come back to this. You'll see what when you're interacting with the page, all of the things that you do. So if you're clicking, it says, oh, there was a click that happened. The important thing is because we've just added that trigger type of form submissions, I'm going to click submit and it gives me a form submit um, uh, action, something that has happened on the website. So I'm not going to close that. If I close that, then this will um, end the session. So I'm going to leave that open. But what I'm going to do is it, we see there the form submit. Then what happened is it went to a thank you page. It could just as easily be form submit and then it just displays a page on the screen. So I'm going to click on the form submit. Now the form submit, what we're actually getting is we're getting, if I go into the variables and I scroll down, this is all of the information that it has captured. Now remember what we just did is we went in and we added in those built-in variables, form element, form classes, form ID and so on. So I just wanted you to see that what we've got here is form ID, form target, form text. So when I was first having a look to see how I could do this, I thought, oh, it's going to pass me a form ID or it's going to pass some information in the form things that come out of the box. And it's going to pass through and that's going to be great. It doesn't. It didn't. It hasn't. So that's where we need to get a little bit creative and we need to actually do something further. So I'm going to close. If I go back to this, I'm going to close this out so we can see there it says debug window closed. I'm done with this. I'm going to close this as well. So once we've just, you don't have to do that. This was just basically to show you what's happening is when the form submission, the um, built-in variable and the built-in stuff, when that passes through, it gives us some information, but it doesn't give us what we truly need. So this is where we're going to go back to variables. And instead of the built-in variables, we're going to scroll down and we're going to do a user-defined variable. So same thing, I'm going to click on new and then I'm going to click and I'm going to select a data layer variable. Okay, so I'm going to go, you would select this. I'm going to go into the one that I've already got set up. So once you've gone in and you've selected data layer variable, what we're then doing is what we're able to do is add an additional piece of script, bit of JavaScript underneath where we paste in for the um, marketing form script that we get out of the Dynamics 365 marketing app. We're going to be able to put something else in that will pass through and use this data layer variable or the ability to pass through a variable. And we're going to pass through something that will show what the form name is. So all we need to do with this is we need to go ahead and say, what's the data layer variable name? I'm just giving it something calling it form name. Okay. Um, and then what we're doing is um, I've just picked version two. I assume that's the latest one. So probably the one that should be used. Um, and, and that's it for now. So all I'm doing is I'm giving it a name, form name custom. Ignore this at the minute because it, in terms of this video, I haven't shown you how to reference this variable. So yours will just look like this to start with. So we'll have the variable configuration, variable type, data layer variable, and the variable name will be form name. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close out of that. Now, here's what we need to do in terms of um, actually adding something in onto the form page, wherever you've embedded your Dynamics 365 marketing form. All right, so here is the code from my website where all of this is the code that you would get when you actually paste in the marketing form, form from the Dynamics 365 marketing app. This very, very short, simple um, piece of code. We're basically saying, use that, remember we set up the um, data layer variable. This is basically saying, let's use that data layer ability and push through when someone submits, push through the um, event form submitted. And then what we're doing is we're saying, what's the name of this form? So for every single marketing form that you put where you paste in this code, you'll then put this underneath it and you can give that form 
any name that you want it to be. So how will you identify what this form was used for? You can put that in so that is what's going to be en end up being pushed back into um, your Google Analytics account. So you're going to be able to see that, okay? So that form submitted is the event name that we um, are going to create next. So if I go back into Google Tag Manager, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new trigger. And that new trigger is going to be an event type of a custom event. So what we need to do is we need to capture where, if I go back here, there we go. So we've got the event is form submitted. I need to be able to capture that event. So I'm going to create a new trigger and the trigger type is custom event and the event name is form submitted. So someone goes through and they go to the form and then they're basically um, filling it out. If they then go through and submit it, we're able to take that information, take the name of the form and pass it back through to Google Analytics. Okay, so if I now go back and this is all set up, so I've got those pieces that I've created. Um, oh, sorry. No, we haven't. I've got one more thing. So the last thing that I need to do, so I've got my um, two triggers. I've got the form submission one and then I've got my custom event, which is getting the information from the web page itself in that script. Um, I have all of the form variables turned on, the, the uh, built in ones, and I have my custom variable that I've created my custom variable of form name custom. The last thing that I need to do is I need to create a tag. So very, very similar. I'm clicking on new, my tag, I'm giving it a name and then the tag configuration, I'm going to use the Google Analytics Universal Analytics option. Now I'm gonna go back into the one that I've already created so we can see. So there's my tag type, which was the Universal Analytics. From here on out, I'm going to pick the type is going to be an event. The category is freeform text. So you can put whatever you want. That is what will go back into Google Analytics when you're looking at your events. So form submission, form submissions, whatever it might be. The action is the custom thing that we've just created, that form name custom. And I'm gonna be able to find that down the bottom here. And that's that data layer variable. So I'm going to pull that and that is the name of the form that we've given it right here. So my um, category is going to be form submission. The action is going to be the name of the form. So I literally just find it from here, click on it, and it will add this in with the curly brackets. The label, you can put whatever you want. I'm using the page path, which is going to be the last part of the URL after my domain, just so that again, I'm able to see, I might actually have something that's the same form name, but I want to see on which page is it actually um, most successful on. I'm not putting any kind of value in here. That's up to you if you have something that you want to track. I'm leaving that empty. And then finally, non-interaction hit, I'm doing as two, that's two, true. And then you should have your Google Analytics ID already in there. Again, this is assuming you have set up Google Tag Manager already and you know that you're linking it to your Google Analytics account. Finally, at the bottom, I have, how is this being triggered? So this will be empty and you will just basically be clicking and you will be finding your um, trigger that you're using. So I've already added that form submission trigger and that's the one that we set up, one of the ones right at the very start. So I've now linked it all back together so the tag is what I'm gonna be passing back through into Google Analytics, is this information right here. I'm tracking this as an event. The category is form submission. I'll pass through the form name from the custom um, information that we've set up. We'll get the page path as the label, all good. Now, once you are done and you've made all your changes, you're going to click submit. You can give that a name and a description which is good practice, and then you would go ahead and publish all of your changes. All right, so the very last thing is now we go into Google Analytics and under behavior, you have the events area. Any event 
some you will be aware of, some you might not have set up yourself, but it might be being, being tracked um, because of other things that, that have occurred. But you should see all of your events here. And I've got form submission. I'm going to go into that. Now, the first thing you'll want to do is if you have been doing tests for this, just make sure that your date is arranged where you've actually got some of those tests because it will have captured those. Um, then what I'm going to do is instead of showing the category, I want to show the event action. So my action, remember, is the name of the form that I've passed through when someone submits the form. Then what I'm going to do is add a secondary dimension and my secondary dimension is going to be the event label. So now I can see that I've got the um, event action and then the event label. The only annoying thing is, is there's obviously when you're doing tests and I'm trying to figure this out, I have this information that is not really accurate because I was testing it and passing stuff through. Also, where we have this undefined, this is how I realized that when someone fills out the search box on my website, that that was being passed back through as well, which is why I added in the clause to say, only send form submissions where the form class, so the CSS style doesn't equal search form or whatever it might be. So now I've got all of this information, I can see that I've had three um, events, unique events, so I've had this for the lead generation form, event registration form, forward to a friend form and so on. Again, the way in which we've set this up, we do it does not matter whether we're using a redirect page, it does not matter if it's the same form on every page, we can clearly state what's the name of the form that should be passed back through via Google Tag Manager into Google Analytics. So I know it's a lot, so go to my blog if you want to go ahead and implement this because that's every single screenshot, step by step. Um, I really hope this has helped. For me, I think this is a massive deal in terms of being able to get that information into Google Analytics because then you can create goals using events and the triggering of events. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this something that you think you're going to be able to implement? Is this something you can see that would be beneficial maybe for your own customers if you're implementing um, Dynamics 365 marketing yourself? So let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear um, your thoughts um, and thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.